Hi, I'm Donna Patterson and I teach 6th through 8th grade, but I know that this lesson is for everyone, so thank you for listening in. Now, before we get started, let's make sure you have something to write with and write on. So, pen, pencil, and paper. I'll give another minute and then we'll get started. Okay, let's open up this, this lesson with a prayer. Let's pray together with the Lord's Prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So everybody has their something to write with and something to write on? Because we're going to need that later on, actually at the end of the class. So this is one of my favorite lessons, and it's about Jesus healing us and how he heals us. So let me start off with a story. As we know, Jesus, Jesus walked the land and to spread the word of God. And he had believers, and he had non-believers. And one day, he was in a small town of Capernaum, uh, spreading the word and talking about God. And four men came into the crowd, carrying a friend that was paralyzed. The man could not move his arms or his legs. But there was such a crowd that they could not get to Jesus. So they climbed up on the roof where Jesus was, tore a hole in the roof, and lowered their friend down upon Jesus. Jesus was amazed at the faith of these men, that they would do such a chore to get their friend to him. So, Jesus looked at the paralyzed man and said, your sins are forgiven. Well, some of those people said, only God can forgive us. Who are you to forgive our sins? They were pretty much judging Jesus very harshly as he continued to help this man. And Jesus asked them, well, why are you asking these things? Which is easier, forgiving him of his sins or telling him to get up and walk? His words confused people. So he told the man, get up and pick up your mat and go home. And with everyone's amazement, the man did as Jesus said, he got up, he picked up his mat, and he went home. Not only did Jesus want people to see what he could do and how he could forgive us and forgive sins, but most importantly, he wanted people to know that forgiveness, forgiveness is an act of healing. And that's what we're going to talk about in our lesson today. That forgiveness is an act of healing. Jesus wants to heal us as well through forgiveness. As a paralyzed man, we are all paralyzed in some way. How do you think we're paralyzed? Think about it. Maybe we're selfish at times. We have sinful habits. Jesus wants us to be free of these sinful habits. He desires to release us through forgiveness. He wants us to go forward and move towards others, excuse me, and towards God our Father. He wants to lead us in a direction that will keep us on a godly route. How are we healed by Jesus? You just mentioned it. Think about it. Say it out loud in your group. I mean, at your home. By forgiveness. As he forgave the paralyzed man, he will forgive us. But we must ask for forgiveness. In the Catholic Church, we do this through the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Your first reconciliation is participated prior to your first communion, which many of you have completed or on route to do so. 
But it does not stop there. Asking God for forgiveness is ongoing in every day of our lives. In our prayers and through continued confessions with the priest. Each time you confess with the priest, you are experiencing the sacrament of reconciliation. During this time, we confess all of our sins that we remember committing. The most serious sins are mortal sins, as are as sins that are, may not be as serious, that are venial sins. But the mortal sins, they can separate us from God's grace, or they do. But even the smallest sins can place distance between us and God and can too easily lead us into making more serious sins. A little bad habit can easily evolve into a bigger bad habit. Again, who do we confess our sins to in the sacrament of reconciliation? To God, of course, but also to a priest. But only a priests have the authority in the Catholic Church to give sins, to forgive sins in the name of Christ. When we tell a priest our sins, Jesus hears them too. In receiving absolution, we are receiving Jesus' forgiveness. And that is through the ministry of the priest. Everything we tell a priest in confession is confidential. Confidential means private. That's private between me and the priest when I go to confession. It is their duty not to share it, anything that they hear, and that is called the seal of confession. The seal of confession. That is the duty of a priest, to seal the confession. So, celebrating reconciliation, is it a celebration? Often, reconciliations can take place in a reconciliation room or confessional in a church. As a sinner, we must endure all things willingly. Otherwise, how do we seek God's forgiveness if we're not willing to ask for forgiveness? And we, we, we must be truly sorry to confess our sins. We don't go to confession and just say, I'm sorry, I did that, I won't do it again. We must really be truly sorry for our sins as we confess them to the priest. And we need to humbly carry out our penance. And our penance could be whatever the priest decides. It could be so many Hail Marys, so many Our Fathers, maybe something to help others we can take part in the confession in a couple of different ways we can go to a confessional where there's a private room and a screen between me and the priest or i can call the church and ask for an appointment with the priest and do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him and sometimes a catholic church will have a community confession but you don't say your sins out loud. They're still private to the priest. So there's various ways that you can uh, go through and confess your sins through the reconciliation. But no matter how we celebrate that or conduct our confession, we do only reconcile our sins with a priest. And God hears those sins. When the priest absolves us in God's name during that confession, then Jesus forgives us. Our sins are forgiven. With mortal sins, the most serious sins, they could keep us apart from God forever. So that's so important uh, to ask for forgiveness of those sins, of all sins, of course. But once they are forgiven, we are restored to the communion with God. And eternal punishment is remitted. 
We are no longer deprived of the grace that makes us incapable of eternal life. Temporal or temporary punishment, which lasts for a period of time, can be lessened as we strive through prayer, acts of penance, works of mercy, and charity. I like to say making ourselves better and doing things for others. We receive forgiveness of our sins when we celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation. And I know I'm repeating myself somewhat, but I, I want us to understand that the sacrament of reconciliation is ongoing. And, and it doesn't just happen our first time and it goes away. We must continue to participate in the sacrament of reconciliation. We also must accept our penance and fulfill it. And when we do so, of course, we're forgiven. But we feel such a sense of peace. And we're given such strength, so much more strength, for all the future challenges of temptations that lies ahead of us in our lives. No matter who we are, where we are, and how old we are. There's always going to be temptations and challenges. When we receive God's forgiveness, we also receive the grace to forgive others. If God can forgive us, we can forgive others. When we forgive others, our relationship with them and with God is healed. In forgiving others and making and asking for their forgiveness, we continue celebration of reconciliation. It's all part of the inner process of healing, of God healing us through forgiveness. Consider all the wonderful gifts that, gifts that come from reconciliation. It's easy to see why we call it a celebration. Jesus' gift of healing, healing, in no doubt is something to celebrate. The feeling of not carrying something on your shoulders or in your mind or in your heart or in your soul that bothers you because something that bothers you and you may share with a friend may seem very small to them, but if it matters to you and you know it wasn't right, give it to God. Give it to God through your sacrament of reconciliation by asking for forgiveness. And even if you have not made your first reconciliation yet and gone to a priest, you can talk to God every day and ask for forgiveness. It's like, it's like getting another chance. The sacrament of, recon of reconciliation gives us the chance to heal and repair our relationship with God. And, of course, others that there may have been a conflict with. We examine our hearts and ask God for forgiveness through the sacrament of reconciliation. So, in summary, I, I, I want you to know that you don't want to wait for your reconciliation or your sacrament if you haven't made that yet. Because you should always be talking to God in prayer. But that we are giving, given something that's so wonderful to celebrate and to release any suffering and heart pain of things that we've done or said or have experienced. Um, where he will forgive us and heal us through that, through confession. So, that's the lesson. However, your homework assignment, and write this down. You can pick up your pencils and paper still. Well, that's right. We haven't put them down yet. Uh, name four things you remembered from this lesson. Write four things that you remembered from this lesson. And remember, you can re-watch this video at any time. The next one, 
Write three ways how you will live what you've learned. So what you have learned in this class or this lesson, how are you going to put it in your life? Three ways. One, two, three. I'm going to repeat that. Name four things you remembered from this lesson and write three ways how you will live what you learned. Now, before we go, let's learn a new prayer to, to, to pray together. The prayer is called, it's a prayer of Saint, uh, we're from Saint Ignatius. A prayer of Saint Ignatius, it should say from. And what the prayer is, is called the Daily Examine. The Daily Examine. Before we get started, Make sure you have your pen or pencil, something to write with. We're going to write down five phases. We're going to break, I'm going to break down this prayer for you. Number one, I want you to write, be still. Be still. Number two, be grateful. Be grateful. Number three, look back. Look back. Number four, talk with God. Talk with God. Number five, look ahead. Look ahead. I'm going to repeat those. Be still is number one. Be grateful is number two. Look back is number three. Talk to God is number four. And look ahead is number five. Now those are the five phases of the daily examine from St. Ignatius. Now put your pens and papers down and we're gonna go through the prayer. And I'm going to guide you through this prayer by giving you some descriptions of each phase. But this is a time for you to pray alone. Your quiet time, the best time is right before you put your head on that pillow or even when your head is on that pillow. Um, and if you do this every night and you continue to practice and practice and practice, it does not make perfect, it makes permanent. It will be a permanent behavior for you that will help you throughout your life. So shut your eyes, bow your heads, and, and, and take yourself to a very serene, quiet place. I don't mean physically, I mean in your mind. And then you're going to think through these phases as I describe them. And I'm going to pause after each one to give yourself time to do some thinking. So number one, be still. Your eyes are shut, your head's bowed, and you're really still. You're not fidgeting, you're not tapping your foot, you're not twiddling, you're not tapping a pen or drinking a drink. You're still. Calm your heart. Calm your mind. Easy breathing. This is your quiet time. Going to phase two. Be grateful. Give thanks to God for his gifts. Think about sharing these gifts with others. These are not gifts with bows and wrapping paper. These are gifts that God has given you. Your strength, your knowledge, the ability to do, do things for others. Thank God for, for the, all the gifts he has given you.
Going into phase three, look back. Review your day step by step. What you did, whom you encountered, and your thoughts and feelings along the way. The decisions you made. What kind of decisions did you make? Could they be made in a more positive way? Could you have encounters in a more positive way? Are you happy how your day went? Are you satisfied that God would be proud of you? Or that your family would be proud of you? Look back at your day and think about your day from morning till now. Talk with God is phase four. Tell God the things you feel good about. I'm so proud of myself, and it's okay to be proud of yourself. This is what happened. I did this, and I'm very excited. And also tell them the things you regret. Oh, I wish I've done this instead of that. I could have been nicer to that person. I could have shared this with that person. Express your sorrow for the times you ignored God. And we ignore God when we don't do the right things. And we ignore God when we don't do things to help others when we could have. Ask Him, ask God to help you make different choices next time. All you have to do is ask. He will lead the way. Phase five, look ahead. Ask God to help you be your best self as you look forward to a new day tomorrow. Ask God to help you be your best as you look forward to a new day tomorrow. You don't have to try to be like anybody else to be the best you can be. Okay, and that, that prayer, and if you, if you wrote down those five phases, every day put that in your life. So your other homework assignment, that would be th the third homework assignment, is how can I make this kind of prayer part of my daily routine? And that is our lesson today, and I want to thank you for tuning in and be sure to turn in your homework assignment, and um, let's go ahead and end with Hail Mary. That's one of my favorite prayers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you all, and Merry Christmas.